Whoa, well, well, what's going on everybody in the middle of a move? Well, why not create a video on how to move aquariums, whether big or small or salt or fresh. Most of this will be the same, right? Most of the principles will be identical. If you've done it before, maybe in the comments below, you can add what you feel is going to help folks make an even better transition from one place to another. So first step is either end the lease or sell the house. The biggest step to me is planning. And I'll go a little bit more into that, but hear me out. The planning part is probably the most beneficial for the reduction of stress as it can ever be. Keep in mind, I have revised, talked about, and replanned, removed, changed how we did things over a dozen times. And it's not an exaggeration, it is absolutely fact. To the point where the two people that have come to help me have brought ideas of their own that we can implement. Using casters that support the weight to make the move easier. I have suction cups. So before I get into that, prior planning prevents poor performance in anything we do. So first step, understand your aquariums, their spatial needs, and what you need to move them. In my case, it has to be a U-Haul truck. Now there's some things that I need to pay attention to. Is this U-Haul truck big enough for me to put my aquariums on? Well, yes, I have a 26 foot truck and I'm moving about five or six aquariums across state lines. You may be moving them five minutes away and the principle is still the same. Have enough space to move them and supported by whatever vehicle or vessel you are putting them in to move them. One key factor, if your vehicle or trailer has a far rear axle, and I say that because some people may have the car and then a trailer, you want on the bed of wherever you're putting it to get those aquariums as far front as possible because of the bumps. Now, unless you live in the absolute perfect world where they make amazing roads, then maybe not that big of an issue. But for me, it's crappy roads construction and I want to make sure that those aquariums are not jostled around so planning 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 preparation and then making sure you have a big enough vehicle vessel trailer to get those aquariums in but what's the next step so the next step for me has to be what am I going to do with the fish during transport. Do I leave them in the aquarium? Do I take them out? When do I take them out? All of these things have to play a role. What water do I use? Do I use filters? Do I not use filters? Could I use sponge filters? Do I need oxygen? All of these things will just come through your brain because these animals are special to you. They're very special to me. So whether it's a little tank, a tank that only had water in it, or you have a 220 gallon with Trophius and Dardani, those same principles remain. What should I do? Even if you have salt water, the principles remain the same. So for me, it's all about the least amount of stress that I can place on these fish. So for me, I wanna go, okay, these guys are pretty big for just leaving them in the aquarium. The aquarium's too big to move with any amount of water in it, so I have to drain this. So two weeks, three weeks, a month, whenever you wanna do it prior, you have to make sure that your seeding or utilize a canister filter or your hang on the back, you have to have a tub and you have to have potentially a power supply. Now, I want you to take a moment because this is not always necessary. You can get by three or four hours as long as you have enough water and enough air for that fish. However, I like to do things in the best possible manner, and that is providing the best environment that they've been in the whole time, and then move them into a tote with no circulation of water. I, it can be done, but I think they have a better chance of survival if I provide them with a temporary enclosure, so to speak, that is as close to the original thing they were in as possible. So I've been seeding some CJ Shark ADVs, they will go one in the tub, one in the tub, and now I have to have power for them. 
Well, they'll be in the vehicle that has a power converter. So we're good. If you don't have power, you can get a battery generator, a battery backup, whatever it is, just make sure that you have power and make sure you have enough battery life to get you to your destination. Now, this one has much smaller fish. I believe, oh, and also, I have two different breeding colonies happening in there from slender buffalo heads to regular. And I don't feel trying to get all those fish out is the best for them for this specific tank. So you see the difference. There was a specific need for this tank. There is a specific need for this tank. So I'm going to drain this tank to maybe about four or five inches to allow these fish to still be in the environment that they remember. Now, because of the sloshing around, I believe based on their size that they will be okay. And for the best interest of all of it, they will be great. For saltwater, if you're a saltwater person and you're looking, principles are the same. Should I take all of the coral out and move them and put them in something? Or should I just drain the water all the way down and right above, I can still pick up this aquarium. I can put some towels around and ultimately, they will survive all the way up. I can take the fish out and they'll be okay. So that's what we're gonna do. We're not gonna take all the coral out, we're just gonna drain the water. Now, we've got the plan for the fish, right? We've got some nano fish, we're gonna do the same thing. So small aquarium sitting right on there. We're gonna drain it down a little bit low. If you have plants, make sure your plants are taken care of and ultimately have the best interest for the fish as you possibly can. So seeding filters, not seeding filters, taking out all the water, or maybe we're capable of moving this aquarium with majority of the water removed. And that is the case. So now I've got plans for the tanks, the truck, the movement, and the fish. What now? All right, so people may laugh at this one, but this is pretty critical and it could make things really stressful if you haven't done this. You've got all your plans for your fish, your tanks. What about the supplies you need to get these fish out, to hold these fish, or to transport these fish, such as nets, things of that nature, the power outlets, the supplies, the water conditioners that you may need in the event there's an ammonia spike, depending on if you're going three miles or 3,000 miles. You have to understand that the principles are the same. It's just the further you go, the more risk there is, right? So make a list, write down what you think you're going to need for it. So I knew I needed a net, so I went out and got a net. I've got buckets and totes and converters. And then I realized after moving a lot of tanks that having suction cups are a huge benefit to larger aquariums. Thank you very much, Ted Judy from Custom Aquariums for helping a brother out, and he sent four. So, now I've got all the supplies. I've got everything I need. I've got my water conditioners, and it's whatever you decide to use. I've got my nets, I've got my totes, I've got my power, I've got everything I need. Everything I need. And now you have to understand, bring a smaller bucket tote with you in the event you're traveling really far and maybe some of your fish get aggressive, at least you can separate some of those fish into smaller buckets temporarily so that you can free up the stress of those animals. This is serious. If you're going three minutes, it's not the same, but if you're doing 3,000 miles, you might wanna think about having a backup for the event of aggression or maybe something happens and there's a small leak in your tote. You have all of those things planned out. Well, I guess the next step would be to start all of that, right? But I can't do it by myself. All right, so the next step is, do you, are you capable of moving all this stuff yourself or do you need help? And in my case, I needed help. But what's really cool is I had the, I mean, it's a gift. I had an amazing person called Fab4 Aquatics. Check it out, his name's Paul, he was, I mean, the kindness of his heart to come from Florida, his business, his family, and come help move tanks. And then on top of that, I had Radical Reefs, Ken Carey, come all the way from Ohio to help me move. I am beyond grateful. And I'm not saying that this would happen every time because this is the first time that I've ever had this happen. 
So in the event that I didn't get this amazing, gracious offer from two individuals, there are options. Uh, U-Haul, can, you can rent folks, so you have to plan that. Uh, I'm sure there are local people that you can give some food to and pizza and drinks, and they will come load them for you at your place. And then at your destination, you just either are lucky enough to get the same people or you plan to have a couple of folks there to help you move these aquariums. Now I've seen people get up 12 people to help them move a 300 gallon aquarium. So to get two people locally shouldn't be that demanding, but you may have to start way earlier than your planned move to look for that help. And that's up to you. It's going to be circumstantial and it'll be different from everyone across the board. I'm just lucky enough to have two folks help me move tanks that are staying with me here and going with me to the new house. So, well, it's time to start moving these bad boys. And the first step was measuring before we drain. And now we're going to drain, capture the fish, minimizing their stress, getting the aquarium strapped on. So enjoy the ride. So you grab your transport. In this case, it's just a tub. And you're going to use some of the water straight from the aquarium because we're trying to keep the absolute best environment that we can. So I'm coming out here to the hose and I'm legit just going to fill it up. It's draining straight from the aquarium and you're not going to do this out of the 220 to put three different tanks of fish in three different tubs with the same water. I would do my best to take that water from that aquarium and put it into the respective tub that you're putting the fish in. It's not a pro tip. It's probably the best thing. It's, it's like saying that you are going to be trapped in a bubble for 30 hours and it was the altitude of Florida. And then they trap you in Colorado, Denver, Colorado's bubble. It's not going to be comfortable. It's going to be stressful. So it's a stretched out analogy, but it's as close as I can get to you understanding that this water is going to really help these fish because we're filtering it with the filters that have been running in it. So there's a lot of wins for this transport. Keep in mind, all of these practices are the same, whether you do fresh or salt. Ha! Ah, we're moving tanks. Yes, we're moving tanks. The 220 is getting drained. We're filming. We're doing some really cool stuff with it so that I could showcase all of the things that not just myself, but it's like, Team Win is doing so 26 foot truck killing it slaying it doing it don't care and I've got my man fab four aquatics ready we're about to move the 220 so once the water comes out we're gonna be golden but I started doing a little ditty here got it all set up and people come in and help so I got radical reefs fab four aquatics this is awesome people but here's a great idea which I should have known because I use casters to move a 12 foot tank from Dallas to Chicago. So I went out and bought these bad boys. Yeah, that's right. The tank with the water out, estimated weight is still good on these bad boys. So we gonna roll it. So if you see me rolling, don't hate me. We're moving this tank no matter what. So really, really fun stuff, really cool. It's just, you know, moving is stressful no matter what. I don't care who you are, what you're moving. It's stressful. And to have friends around you that share the common thought of, you know, fish are friends, not food. But, you know, they, they have the same idea of we're going to take care of these fish. We're going to get them done. And we're going to get it done in the best possible way. Well, that makes it a whole heck of a lot better because they're seeing things from a different perspective. So if you're somebody that does like to have total control over most situations like this, which I very much do, I'll be the first one to, to tell you, but I am also very much open to everyone's recommendation. So this whole plan has been revised multiple times. Well, this guy is more anal than I am. He's wrapping lights and it's crazy awesome. Pro tip, using the shark to filter the tote while we're bringing the fish. And another pro tip, I got totes that have holes to help with gas exchange when the lid's on there so I don't have to drill holes in these totes so that I can reuse these totes for whatever it is. But look at that. Shut up, boom Oh, yeah. 
Gotta love it. All right, so tank is almost done. All of the fish are out. They are in their tote as promised. We transferred some extra stuff. We didn't have to, but helps break up sight line, make some of the shellies feel good. The trophies can go in and out of the rocks and the big cats have a place to hide underneath the plants and things of that nature. So if you got some room and you can still pick that up, just go ahead and make it the best you can make it. That's the idea. So once we get out some of the rocks, we're gonna leave. There's not a lot of sand in this tank, which is super beneficial. And the bottom is plastic. It's a PVC bottom tank. So it's not gonna be as heavy as a full on glass tank. Doesn't mean it won't be heavy. So we're going to take this tank and get it on these rolling dollies, whatever you want to call them. However, we then have to get it over this lip into the truck and we've designed a plan to build things around it to secure it. And one of those things is the TV. So there's a lot of wrapping and things of that nature. So the supplies, making sure you have them, the, the clamps, the whole nine yards. I may be missing some things. But now you have the ability to see all the way up to, here we are, getting ready to drain it down to two millimeters with the Ultra Zero. And then from there, it's on the truck. So the end is near. Still a little stressful, but not as stressful when you have a lot of help around you. You have the ideas that you can bounce around folks and you've prepared. Huh? All right, let's move it on the truck. Remember to just make sure that you and all of your resources are on the same page. Constantly communicate, making sure that everything you're doing is in the best interest of the animal and its enclosure. Because at the end of the day, these things are very expensive and you've worked very hard to get them. Now to the truck. Slow and steady wins the race. Tank is on casters, everything's good. We're waiting for the other person because it does have the drains and we don't wanna disconnect the drains and risk the leakage when we get to the new place. So we need to get the tank up off so we can get it up the ramp. Once we do that, we should be good to go. So now we're gonna drain another one. Look at this guy, he showed up. Fab Four, Radical Reefs. Jay Will. No. So the next step, once you get it on, and I'll be honest with you, I thought it was recording and it wasn't, but we were gonna use the rolling dilios. It worked to get it out of the house but ideally because of this shoddy driveway and the width of this rampola, it was crapola. So we ultimately had to lift it up, tilt it, and because there was bulkheads, lift it straight up. But the idea is I wanna show you, once it's back on the stand, you wanna make sure that it's semi-level, as level as you can get it. The tank went on and now we strapped it down so that it doesn't move. And you may go, well, why do you strap the stand? Well, once we get the rest of the stuff, we can strap it down along with the mattress and now it's all in place. Because I don't want to buy more straps. That wasn't my idea, so you can't say that that was a great idea for me. It was from Fab Four. All right, so now you've got your aquariums on the truck, you've driven five miles or 5,000 miles, and you've done it safely. You're now ready to offload your aquariums into the rightful spot, but, before you do that, you have to do a couple things. You gotta clear out the area, right? And then on top of that, you have to make sure that when the stand goes down, it's level, and then the aquarium goes down and it's level as well. Being level is key to success when keeping aquariums. All right, so you've measured everything, you know you can bring the aquariums in. I'm not gonna show you how to bring aquariums into your home because it's gonna be different for everybody. Just make sure you have enough folks and you have shims if you need shims to level your aquarium. Once you have your aquarium in place, let me show you. Like so, the next step is going to be to check your source water, right? You've got fish in a bucket like that. And now we just have to make sure that we have everything to a T. So check your source water. I know a lot of folks don't do this, but let's say your source water was one thing, you're trying to do the same thing in another state or even another county, or heck, across the city where the pipes are older, there's a lot of difference that can happen. pH shift, they could be adding specific uh, chemicals to change the ammonia content and bind it a certain way. There's so many different things. Test, test before you add. And then make sure the temperature from your holding area for your fish to the new aquarium is the same. But if you're just setting up the aquarium with no fish, then well, you don't have to worry about that. Now, you get to enjoy your aquarium. 
that's pretty much it. Just a lot of planning. So plan, plan more, plan again, and then bounce some ideas off of some folks. Because if you do that, you'll find out that maybe you were missing a piece. Now, if I could do it all over again, there are a couple things I would have did differently. I would have drained this tank all the way. I would have taken all the fish out. But based on everything that I knew and everything that I wanted to get done, I thought that that was the best. Ultimately, that didn't prove me right, but it also didn't prove me completely wrong. So remember, when moving aquariums and moving fish, there's a lot of things that can happen. Freshwater, saltwater, some fish may not like the move. They may get stressed, it happens. But at the end of the day, as long as you prepare and you do the best you can in that situation, you're still gonna feel bad if you lose a fish, but you'll know that you didn't intentionally or neglect that fish in any way. If you're breeding fish, or let's say you've got a saltwater aquarium, it may be best to try to save as much of the water that is in the aquarium as you can. Doesn't mean you have to save it all, but save most of it. With this aquarium, we drained it all the way down so that the coral was still under the saltwater, and then we did a lot of testing to get it back up. This was actually the first aquarium back up and thriving again because we didn't want anything to happen to the coral where most fish can tolerate some slight differences. So keep all of these things in mind when you're about to move aquariums. Now just remember, with any move, there is bound to be some sort of issue. So as long as you have a slight backup plan or what I like to call a fail safe in the event you do have an emergency or issue, you should be perfectly fine. Now it's not not stressful, but you can mitigate a ton of stress if you plan. I don't think I've said plan enough throughout this video. Now you may be wondering throughout this video, why didn't the massive Lake Tanganyika Aquarium make it into the house? Well, it's because it was too big. Even though I measured, it's the idea of space. So when we looked at it, and I had some people here that can still help me, I realized that the depth of that aquarium, the width of that aquarium, and the length was just way too much for this room. So we sold it. Sometimes selling all of your aquariums prior to moving is the best bet. But if you have a ton of fish and aquariums that are very nostalgic to you or you have a lot of money invested in them, well, then it maybe makes sense to move them. So if you're moving aquariums today, you moved them yesterday, or you're moving five years from now, I do wish you the best. I wish you safe travels, and I hope you get to exactly where it is that you are going. Thank you so much for watching. You know what's next. Aha! We always find moving extremely stressful or very hard because it's a change. And well, most humans today don't deal with change very well. But sometimes change can be the greatest thing to ever happen to you. Yeah, the greatest thing that ever happened to you. And sometimes it's difficult to just break that small threshold, right? It's hold your breath, let's go. But the grass may not always be greener on the other side. So making a change and calculating that change properly and planning and finding balance in all that movement, chances are that change is gonna benefit you in a big way. But just remember, just because something visually looks better than where you're at now, does not necessarily mean that it is better. Because sometimes it takes a lot of work to keep that grass on the other side of the fence much greener than what's happening on your grass and you need to tend to your grass. So sometimes doing a little bit more work on ourselves is just the right amount of change that we need to make the impact and the difference that we were looking for. So, what are you waiting for? Fertilize yourself, child. <laughs> Get it done. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you are extremely happy and content in your life.